I'm Panini Pete, a professional chef with small town roots and a passion for one of a kind places. I'm day tripping down the back roads and main streets of America to prove that small towns are extraordinary destinations, each one rich in history and full of happiness, where people care about people and treat you like one of their own. They celebrate life, tradition, and one of a kind food culture. So join me as we gather all the local ingredients to serve up a big helping of small town flavor. back in the Civil War eras to the bourbon industry and even now into the future of tourism in this town. If you look behind me, half of this is the original structure. It's been here since the mid-1800s. And if you can only imagine back then, Civil War troops coming and going, loading and unloading all over this board. Bourbon barrels loaded to the hill going all over the country. Today, this train still serves a very important purpose in this town, hauling visitors on a historic journey down the tracks. They're also serving up some of the finest cuisine known to be made in transit. So we're going to go on board my old Kentucky dinner train, meet Chef Gill, and see what he's cooking up. show you the man behind the meals on this dinner train. Former executive chef at Churchill Downs, now here at the dinner train, Chef Gil Logan. Everybody say hello. Manny How Pete, are you doing? what's up, man? How you doing? Great, man. Good Great to see you. to be here. Very excited. Yeah. Uh, looking for a little insight and tell. Tell me a little bit about the railroad and how significant it was to the history of Barstow. Oh, this is, I mean, our first railroad was 1860. So before you, you left the east and the Cumberland Gap, you came over into the west, this was your gateway. Tell me a little bit about your cuisine and uh, what we you like to We love to use the stuff. best fresh local ingredients. Um, I've been working with all the farmers in Kentucky for the past 10 years. We've got great relationships with them. I get the best foods. Most of these trains that do this thing, they don't have a kitchen. And they try to cater from somewhere out and to bring from in and hold premise. the food. So we're talking quality cuisine Alla tonight. Manute, this guy's baby. the real deal. Alla Manute, real we're deal. cooking fresh with fire and serving it. So might be a chance we get to try some of those grits tonight. Oh yeah, tonight. you'll definitely try some. Yeah, good, good, good. I might even give you my secret. Well, I don't want to hold you up. I know you got a lot to do, right. but I appreciate your time. You I'm looking to. forward to getting I'll on see board, you in the and uh, we will see you back you in the kitchen. Great meeting, you. Chef Gill. We're gonna go have some fun, ride the train, just like choo choo, and then we're gonna go eat some grits. Jackson Hollow Trestle, and uh, I think it was the first time I've ever been over a train trestle. I was looking down, it was pretty scary. And that trestle was burned during Prohibition just to prove a point to try to stop the flow of bourbon. And, and you may know there was a Bernheim distillery established in 1852 right in this area. In 1929 during Prohibition and right in the verge of the Great Depression, they set up a foundation geared towards preserving these forests. This whole area now is known as the Bernheim Forest. It's beautiful out here. Here 
we are. We're halfway through the train ride and uh, sitting here relaxing while the engine is moving to the other side. And uh, some really fun, interesting facts. The car that we're in right now, this is a uh, vintage 1940s. Turns out it was built by President Eisenhower for his wife, Mimi, who did not like to fly. She liked to stay close to the ground. And uh, they use this a lot for vacations and travel. And it was also used in uh, when Eisenhower passed away, the funeral procession. The family stayed in this car right here. So, oh, wow, look at all this food. Does this look fantastic? I mean, talk about a great date night when you're here in Barson. You've got to come on this train. We're going over the chefs. Uh, sent us out just a nice little sampling of the dish she's preparing tonight. Here comes hey, we're Chef Gil. Oh, oh, they let you out of the kitchen. Yeah, every now and then they let me out. Well, give me the. Well, look, uh, you got a little grub here. That's good. Down on, uh, what you prepared for us. All right, well, right in front of you right here, we've got our uh, airline chicken breast. That's a local chicken product. That's fresh oh, smashed local there. red bebis potatoes, carrots with honey, and that's our sourwood honey from the Appalachian Mountain area over there. Um, then I just got a little uh, shiitake mushroom cream, and that's actually the oak-grown shiitake mushrooms from right over here in Springfield. So this is a lobster, shrimp, scallop, garlic cream sauce with puff pastry, and that's a, those Weisenberger Mills grits. grits. Can't have grits without greens. We just sauteed some local greens. Beautiful. And a little lemon. This is our vegetarian yeah. option because we've got to take care of everybody. And that's good. We just got a cheese filled tortellini. Some, uh, um, actually, we put a little mascarpone in our, our marinara, cream it up a little bit. Kind of a take on the Wiener Schnitzel. Okay. I've got local pork, panko bread, crispy it, the red mashed potatoes. I do a nice lemon cream sauce over that. We've been doing this since 1988. It's a special rub, but I'm not telling anybody. We're low and slow, six hours at least. That's how you get that nice Tell me about medium where that all beef. Tell me about where that beef. That is beef is locally too. raised Kentucky beef. Earlier we were at the farmers market here in Barcelona. Okay, well, then, so a lot of this stuff came this from stuff. here. We were really admiring it. You shop there regularly, every, all the time. I know those guys. I'm down there every weekend, and it's open on Tuesdays, which is awesome. If I'd have known that, I would have uh, dropped your name. Well, I tell you what, uh, those tomatoes, the red potatoes that are in here, the parsley, the mint. All from the farmer's market. Fantastic. Today. Well, it's going to be great. We got to see it. It's raw state now. We see it prepared professionally. From Chef Gill here. And uh, it is about time for you to roll. So we're getting into this. Go get it, guys. We're getting into it. Thanks. Look at this chicken. This little airline press. Always great. The shiitake mushroom sauce. Oh, grown right here. Delicious. Wow, that sauce is great. The earthiness of the mushrooms coming right through. Tell they're fresh. Wow, are those good. Stone milled right here, locally. You know, I thought corn was only used for bourbon. They save a little bit for these grits. Good job. Wow, is that good. We're cruising on a train. I'm on a train. I'm on the train. Great. I'm going to try the veggies, too. Some fresh local greens sauteed up. They look delicious. You gotta get your greens, Mom. See? I'm eating good, Mom. It's not all just bourbon and biscuits down here. Pork. Delicious. Oh, that lemon. That little citrus. Looks delicious. Medium rare all the way through from top to bottom. That's not easy to do. Just like what we refer to all the time on the show, the essence of small town flavor. It's all about community, it's all about staying local, eating local, uh, going seasonally. Um, you know, you, you gotta follow the seasons. Go with what's available and what's fresh and, and make the most out of it. And that's what's gonna turn your meal on upside down. And this is a great example of it. The fact that he goes to the market where we saw earlier, all the produce coming in right there. It's a huge difference. You can't beat it. And, it, and it helps support the community you're in. So, hats off to uh, my old Kentucky dinner train and Chef Gill. Cheers. Will you come with me? All right, guys. Here we are. We're back in the kitchen with Chef Gill. We got the invitation. He's going to show us a few of the secrets that he does back here. Keep in mind, we are on a train still. This is not your normal kitchen. We're in the this back one of rocks the a little bit. Yes, rocks a little bit. It's narrow. But uh, tell me what you got going on. Okay, here. basically, the secret to the grits. This is your baby, right? Yeah. It says four and a half parts to one part grit water ratio. Right. I don't do that. I don't listen to any of those rules. 
I take three parts to one until they're good and thick like this. Right. And this is still, this took me about 25 minutes to get to this point, low and slow. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cream them. Now the grits are open, they're ready. Heavy whipping cream, baby. Look at that. And then you'll see a completely, now the cream is gonna cook into the grit, not the water. And that's what's gonna make them soften up, get good and creamy, almost like that blend. Get that extra time in yeah. there where they really get a chance to open up and smooth out. Salt and pepper right in there. And we'll let that go low and slow for another 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna put these on the back burner, move this guy up. I've got shrimp, lobster, and scallops. Poach that first a little bit. I did, yeah. That. Basically, I do the same thing. I, I do a low poach of the shrimp and the lobster. Right. Scallops are raw, scallops just take seconds. Once they're hot, yeah. warm all the way through, they're ready to go. I know what I do. I put some olive oil in there just to change the, the smoke point of my butter. Just a little hotter in there. Yeah. yeah, that's a great method. Add a little bit of olive oil in there. Take the heat, take the smoke point up, pop it right in. This is the dish that we, one of the dishes that we have. Correct. Right. Right. So what do you call this dish, Chef? This is our uh, seafood with garlic cream on crew. On Classic crew. French. Classic. We've got the puff pastry on it. So it's good. It works well. This is the menu in the gym. There's a lot of classic ingredients here with I'm classic trained. and the low corn flakes. I've got the stock from my shells. So I do my own lobster stock. Right on. Heavy cream, garlic. I've already infused this. I put a little bit of thickening in there. I use a roux. Pick it up a little bit. It doesn't go in stock. Oh, you can do it on seafood stock where we're here on a, on a train, of course. That's correct. And then we're going to let that go. How are our grits doing back here? See yeah. how they're starting to get oh, really beautiful. good and creamy. And that's they the secret. so silky. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just a quick wilt. And a lot of people, you know, when they hear greens, they think automatically collards, turnips, mustard. No, no, no. That's what I was thinking. Fresh, just leafy little, lettuce. Just, We've got like well, spring we mix. Dandelion, red oak, baby spinach, frisee, hot soy. All fresh local greens. Greens and butter, they love one another. Greens love garlic. As it bubbles, it's it thickens. It's starting to coat that seafood yep. real nice. We don't want too much air because when seafood's hot, it's ready. They will down real nice. That's a good call. I'm telling you, here we are. Look at this is four star cuisine here. He's making his old seafood stock, cooking the grits with the heavy cream. Fresh mescaline green sauteed up, and we're on a train. This is not my dining, sitting down, four-star restaurant. We are on literally on a train. Look at that precision, like a surgeon. And then we're gonna take these nice creamy that was grits, fantastic. put them right in here. Do it, do it. Yeah. That's the base of our dish. There's a lot of people that really enjoy their seafood on the dinner chain. We've done some really good seafood dishes, but this has been one of the most popular. And you guys ate it, you know well, why. You can go big, it's light, you know, you have the grits, but at the same time, then you're complimented with the light protein, the light sauce, very rich. I understand you have a fantastic and very reasonably priced wine list here. Yes. So, talk about a great evening out. Plain, simple, fresh, delicious, and prepared almond hoop on a train. Come in here and see Chef Gill right here. Come, come, come join us. That was one truly unique experience. I am so loving Barstown. Now I have another very unique experience, and I gotta be honest with you, this one's got me a little nervous. It's my big debut in the Stephen Foster Story play. So I've gotta get over there, get into costume, and kind of get into character and get ready for my big moment. And hopefully I won't derail the whole production, but I figure, hey, how, how better to get into the Stephen Foster story than to actually live it in this play? So let's get over there and check out the show. Come on. I took hands of and his sister and I left them down in the woods and I promised to return I swing my axe I cook no bread my step was for Inside my head Two less mouths 
is two more fed. Stick with Dean. He'll, he'll take you around, just follow him. There will be people swirling around you and you can watch and interact with them and him. And then before the next scene starts, he'll take you, send you that way, and then he has a line to say and, and continue the next scene. Hey everybody, it's Stevie's birthday! Hey everybody, it's Stevie's birthday! Hey everybody, it's Stevie's birthday! Let's kind of stick with you. Hey guys, this is my new friend Dean. He's been, how long have you been with the Stephen Foster story uh, now? 22 years. 22 years you've been performing in this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to get a little inside action. Can you tell me more about the Stephen Foster story? We get a vision of two years of his life, you know, 1849, 1850. So you're in period costume, we're all in period oh. costume, in the antebellum era, you know. So we get to see a little bit of what happens to him in his home in Pennsylvania and a trip down to Kentucky, where he writes my own Kentucky home, our right state here. song. This is it, we're right. living the history. We hear that beautiful state song. It's, it's all coming exciting. full circle. Yes. And my elementary school in Florida was called Stephen Foster Elementary. How about that? I was a Stephen Foster steamer, and now here I am with you, Dan. Stephen Foster Steamer. Appreciate all it right, so much, great. man. This no is problem. incredible. It'll be fun. Gonna have a great night. All right. Thank you for and sharing those welcome. stories. This is you're amazing, welcome. guys. Wait till you see this. This is going to be great. <laughs> oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. There's a lantern in the window, a wisp of smoke, house in the tree. Door I open Fall to my knees To the days when Stephen Foster roamed these very woods seeking inspiration for his immortal music. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stephen Foster story. All right, guys, we're here backstage. Rehearsal went well, but I'm ready for the big moment. I'm getting really nervous, but luckily, Melanie's here to help me out. She's going to give me my cues. It's almost time for my big scene. Any second now. Okay, so right here is where you're going to enter the stage. The cue's coming up. Just give it a few seconds. Watch out for the scene. And any people that might be in the way. Just, and then you'll we'll be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be ready to go. Okay. So, all right, if you want to go right now, let's go. Yeah. Children are gay. 
the corn top survived and the meadows in the bloom while the birds make music all the day. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on this amazing day in Bardstown, Kentucky. I am ready to hit the sack, so we will see you on Up the Road on the next episode of Small Town Flavor. Southbound now. Eat found it down. Load it up man trucking. We gonna do what they say can't be done. We got a long way to go. And it's sure time to get there. Watch your and watch old bear dead fruit. Well, I gotta tell you, John. It was it was John. Huh? Fred. Fred, I'm sorry, Fred. Fred. John. See, that's what the, I was worried about for a reason. It's going to get worse by the time we get that last one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I call you Joe? <laughs> You're calling whatever you want. <laughs> I've been called a lot of different things. We should probably shoot that again. Let's, that yeah, we should. Actually, oh, really? Yeah, let's I actually do it. Then I'm going to go tight across with y'all holding your glasses up. And so let's just do the toast again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, man. That was down the hatch. Wow, guys, that was an amazing start to this bout. I'm gonna work it off here. <laughs> I gotta sit down for a minute. It's a unique item all over and, and a traditional here. Oh, I'm punch drunk. I'm gravy drunk. That red-eyed gravy just whacked me out. I'm just, we ate so much food I can't move. We, sh we meant to shoot this scene before we ate. One, two, three, four, one, two. Oh, I got a cramp. You wanna do a couple more? All right. Hold on, I think these guys are getting ready to go. Is this where you pay your parking tickets? No? Okay, sorry. That water was delicious. Welcome to Mammy's.
I'm back. <laughs> it's called the Bardstown's Farmer Market. Not too far from here, called the Bardstown's Farmer Market Pavilion. It's called the Bardstown Farmer's Market Pavilion. I'd love to take you down there, introduce you to some of the unique farmers. Here they take it very seriously. They have a permanent facility set up called the Bardstown Farmer's Market. They go and just grab a seat where you like. Yeah, there's a table right over there. They'll come and get you. I gotta go take a drink order. I'll be right back. <laughs> Oops. Come on in. How you doing, guys? You're welcome. <laughs> Stretching products out, eating seasonally. I'm already rambling. So I'm looking at the bald eagles, the animals, the possums, all the happy critters. Let's think peaceful, happy, good thoughts. And a one, and a two, and a... Wow, guys, what an amazing start this was to our Bardstown journey.